I don't just go by the governing body. They're not Joe for God. And even when you read that publication, it's clear that the water, the weight, that's not the Bible. We're not going by a man's interpretation. We're going by the Bible's explanation. The Bible explains itself. God was with me through it all. This video is a conversation I had with a witness. Um, I think this is one of the biggest um, lies that witnesses tell and they speak for God in areas that he didn't speak on when they say that, um, you know, if you doubt, if you're anointed, then you're not anointed at all. Um, the Bible doesn't even hint, it doesn't even hint at this. And, um, you know, after rewatching the conversation, I wish I would have stressed more on Romans 8, on how it's um, talking about if you're in your flesh, you don't even belong to God. Um, and that's what verses 15 to 16 are kind of speaking on and testifying on when it says the spirit bear, bears witness. So I'm going to be talking to another witness about this topic this week. So um, if you, you know, come across any questions or uh, have any thoughts, you know, leave a comment and um I'll make sure to read it. God bless. Okay. So, well, the speaker, uh, he also made the claim that if you doubt that you're chosen to be born again, that means that you weren't. Do you remember he made that statement? Something like that. May not work for work, but yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. You sure about that? You sure about that? That's why? You sure about that? The takeaway point for us is that if you have questions or doubt that you have been chosen to go to heaven, then you have not been. Because God's spirit, this spirit, is the one that put the desires into the hearts of these individuals that their hope is heavenly. It's actually kind of a difficult question to answer. I um, cannot be anointed. Here's the thing, to, to put it, to yeah, put it in the most basic terms, if you even have a question, as if you're anointed or not, you're not. If you even have a question. Why is that? And being anointed is that you just, yeah. it, it's your connection with the Holy Spirit, you just mm -hmm. know if you are or not. Yes, I do remember that, Ryan. So what happens, say if you're a part of the other sheep, what happens if you, if you doubt if you're a part of that group? Does that mean that you just, you just aren't saved? If you're, it, so let me make sure I have your, your question. You're saying, what if my hope is to live forever on earth? What if I doubt that hope? Yes, what happens then? You have to strain the conviction. Okay, you so the standard, the, the, the standard is not the same as if, because uh, you said if you, if you have that desire to, uh, go to heaven and you doubt it, then you're not going to heaven. So That's not what he said, though. You kind of adding a little more to what he said. What he, he, didn't say, he didn't say if you're doubting you're going to heaven, you're not going to heaven. That's not what he said. I think that was his exact words. He's, he quoted uh, Matthew, he, he quoted Romans 8, 816 where he said the spirit bears witness with your spirit so if you doubt it you're not going there if you doubt that you even have that hope i think, I think the idea he was saying is in simple terms those who are of the anointed they're completely convinced there's no doubt if you doubt then you're probably not you probably don't have to have any hope. You should know for sure if you're going to have it. It should be 100% sure. I think that was a simple point. 
Yeah, that's where it's kind of confusing because it's like, is the organization speaking in place of God? Because if the Bible never makes that claim, and you cited Romans 8, 16, um, which didn't speak on that topic. So it's like that, that statement was read, it seemed like it was read into the verse because the, the Bible never says that you have to, you're going to have a hundred percent kind of, you never doubt uh, your standing, your position in God. Well, it did say God's spirit bears witness with our spirit speaking the anointed. So that's the Bible principle vote. You would know by God's spirit. God's spirit gives you convincing evidence. That's what the point is. You should know if you're going to have it. That's all he was saying. You should know. If you're going to have it, you should. If you're not sure, you probably don't have to have an help because based on that Roman verse, his spirit bears witness. Well, I speak. What does that mean? It means you would know. You yeah, would know. yeah. He says you would know that you're a child of God because if, if just in the context, it tells you, it's telling you if you're still in your flesh, you don't belong to God. And then it's telling you uh, if, if you have been given a spirit, you're a child of God. So that's where it's kind of just bearing witness to. I think it just had no, I had no talks about doubting. So it was like, where is he getting that doubt from? That was kind of right. The doubt part was just, kind of right into it. I don't know how to explain more. What I'm saying is when God's spirit bears witness with your spirit, there's no doubt. That's the understanding. There's no doubt. It's, well, sometimes that's, when you say that's the verse. That's the verse mm -hmm. that shows you would not doubt. If God's spirit reveals something to you, it's convincing evidence. His Holy Spirit is the most powerful force in the entire universe. You know, it's almost like for those who are convinced of the truth, they know that the Bible is inspired. They don't doubt it. No, I hear you. You know, you read the Bible, it was inspired by God because God's spirit is what influences writings. Joe, for real, we don't doubt that the Bible is God's word. We know we live by will and the death thousands. Countless thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses have died as martyrs. Why? Not because I, I'm not sure. I'm kind of convinced. No, they know that, like me, I know for a fact I would be willing to take a bullet to the head because I know for a fact the Bible is God's inspired word. Those of the anointed epic, even stronger conviction. God's spirit bears witness with them that they have that hope. They yeah. know they have it. It's like he said, right now, when you you know you're a man, there's no doubt. You, you didn't choose to be a man or woman. You could have been man, woman, even. You didn't choose when you came in this world. I didn't choose. God chooses who he wants to be in heaven with him. And those who have that hope, they, it's just so obvious as when we, like we know what our sex is. When you fill an application, male, female, unsure, you know you're a man. I mm -hmm. know you're a man. Yeah, you but I think, I think when you understand that you fall short uh, every day, sometimes if, 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 you, if you sin, um, sometimes you need that reinsurance. You might doubt, man, it's, it's it's God in me, those, those types of situations. And that's why the Bible has its promises, just like Paul, when you're saying, um, sometimes I do the things I don't want to do. People doubt and you need the Bible to kind of, uh, uh, you know, reaffirm you and, and help you remember who you are. So to doubt if, you know, your position in Christ um, can sometimes happen. I think that's why I think that comment was, was dangerous to say, if since it was so kind of a, like a statement and a fact, um, if it's not kind of back up in the Bible.